Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a continuation in the series of short screencasts devoted to value at risk mapping for my FRM candidate customers. We're following Philip Jorian because it's the assigned text. And this is a snippet from Table 11.6 because previously we've established some of the theory about VAR mapping and now Jorian helpfully goes to illustrate how VAR mapping works with different kinds of financial instruments. And so we start here with the mapping of a forward contract which is a linear derivative. And if it seems confusing at first, just remember our end game here. We want to take the forward contract and identify the risk factors. That is, what are the things in the market that change that if they change impact the value of our forward contract. That's the essence of VAR mapping. We take the portfolio, identify the risk factors, and then map to the risk factors. So here's the example. In this case, it's a one-year forward contract to purchase 100 million euros in exchange for about 130 million US dollars. So this is a forward currency contract and here is the forward exchange rate. Recall a forward exchange rate gives us the ability to lock in that exchange rate in the future. And we know from the example the forward exchange rate is about $1.30 US dollars per one euro. That's the forward exchange rate. And here is the equation for the value of a forward that we expect the value of the forward to be worth zero at least at inception. That is before we go forward in time and some of these risk factors change they will cause the value of the forward contract to deviate from zero. But at inception we expect the value of the forward that's right here on the left to be equal to the spot rate, the expected spot rate discounted, here's our formula for continuous discounting, at what rate, by the way? In this case, that's going to be at the foreign risk-free interest rate, minus the delivery price on the forward, also discounted, but notice in this case, discounted by R, which is typically our domestic risk-free interest rate. So this should hold because we, we should be roughly indifferent to purchasing the spot asset today and setting aside cash in an amount equal today such that it would grow to the delivery price in the future. So if that's our quality, we can just show right here how that works because first I do the left-hand side and Jorian uses annual compounding but we'll see it doesn't make much difference here I'll say equals the currency spot rate so this is the spot exchange rate not the forward rate and we'll just discount it annually by dividing by one plus the foreign risk-free rate and that in this case Jorian calls that the long euro bill but it's the foreign risk-free interest rate and so in doing this formula right here, the spot rate discounted on an annual frequency by the foreign risk-free rate, I get this value for the left-hand side, or at least this part right here, and then I'm going to subtract here the forward currency exchange rate divided by 1 plus the domestic risk-free interest rate you'll see I get this value here. So now I can subtract this from this and I do get zero so I subtracted here a dollar twenty-five is this discounted spot rate minus the discounted delivery price it does give me a value equal to zero and I could do that just as well directly implementing the formula with continuous compounding so in that case I would say the spot currency exchange rate and I'm going to discount continuously so that's the exponential function at minus the rate so I'm not putting time in there that means I'm assuming one year and I get this value 
And then here I'm going to take the forward delivery price or forward ex currency exchange rate in this case, multiply by negative the domestic risk free rate. And I get $1.25 about. And we see the difference is still zero. Okay, so what is the point of that? Well, the point of this snippet is that we've now said, here's the forward contract. The value of the forward contract, you can see here, is worth zero. That's at inception as we expect. And we've now demonstrated that that value is zero under either annual compounding or continuous compounding. What's the point? The point is that here on the left we've shown the value of the forward contract is a function of these factors on the right and specifically three factors. So this is what explains why Jorian says that we can map the forward contract, in this case a forward contract on a currency exchange rate, to three risk factors. The value of the forward here is a function of three risk factors. First of all, it's a function of the spot currency exchange rate, and that's going to be the biggest factor. The biggest driver in the risk of this forward contract is going to be the spot currency exchange rate. But also notice we have two other factors. We have a foreign exchange, I'm sorry, a foreign risk-free interest rate. That's a factor, a risk factor. If that changes, it's going to have an impact on the value of our forward contract. Less than the spot currency exchange rate, but a factor nonetheless. And then our third factor is the domestic, in this case the U.S. riskless rate. So we have three factors, spot currency exchange rate, foreign risk-free rate, and domestic risk-free rate. By definition, we've shown the value of our forward contract is a function of all three risk factors. So from a risk measurement perspective, we can map to those three risk factors. So we'll go into more detail on the next one. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.